I'm Howard Bragman, and welcome to this episode of Gwishus. Very fortunate today to be here with my dear friend and the author of a wonderful new book called Till Human Voices Wake Us, Patty Davis. Patty, thanks for joining us today. We have the daughter of Ronald Reagan, a staunch Republican president on a gay station. Tell us a little bit about why we're here today, Patty. Well, mostly we're here um, because of my novel, Till Human Voices Wake Us, which I just self-published on Kindle through, um, through Amazon. And um, it is the love story of two women who unexpectedly fall in love with one another. Two sisters-in-law, years ago I overheard a conversation um, where these people were talking about two sisters-in-law who just fell in love with one another, having no background of being you know, gay or bisexual or anything. They just fell deeply in love. And I thought, that's so wonderfully complicated. But, you know, interestingly, it, it, I ended up publishing this, not intentionally, but I ended up publishing it at the same time that all of this is going on in the Supreme Court and, and gay rights and gay marriage is so much on the front pages. So it, it's one of those coincidences that authors just, you know, enjoy, enjoy having. We don't create the coincidences. A happy coincidence. Uh, so let's, you know, you touched on it before that we, this book comes out in the wake of a lot of controversy about gay marriage nationally. You know, your father's own history with the gay rights movement is, is a very interesting history. On the one hand, a lot of gay activists do not like your father because they felt he was very late in his response to AIDS yeah. and HIV. And yet at the same time, in 1978, he aggressively opposed what was called the Briggs Amendment, which was on the ballot in California, which was, would have not allowed any gay teachers in the state of California, and he even wrote an op-ed about it. Um, you think your father, people are trying to simplify what was his life, which was in fact a more complicated man than that? Yes, I mean, I think uh, people have chosen my father to, um, to use and, and mold into whatever they want him to be, you know? Um, he was a very tolerant person. He did not have prejudices against gay people. Was he late in addressing the AIDS issue? Yes, he was. And I think, you know, if he could speak for himself on that, which of course he can't, I think he probably would say that, that he was. Um, and, that, and that he didn't realize that it, it was the plague that it, that it was. Um, but, you know, there's no getting around that. Yes, you know, he was, he was late in that. But he, you know, I grew up with, um, with two lesbian aunts who used to babysit us when my parents, if my parents went out of town together. They went on a trip to Hawaii, I remember, when my brother was very, very young. And, um, and you know, they stayed at our house. They slept in my parents' room um, in the king-size bed, and I, I mean, I grew up understanding that they were a married couple. You know, I had aunt and uncle this and aunt and uncle that, and then I had aunt and aunt. <laughs> it was, so, how do you think your father would, would pan out on the gay marriage debate that's going on right now? I think he would be um, puzzled, on the one hand, at why anyone would have a problem with people wanting to be married and wanting to be committed to one another and you know how what what difference does it make to anybody else's life um, and I also think because he wanted government out of people's lives that he would not understand the intrusion of government banning such a thing this is not what he would have thought government should be should be doing. So posthumously you're saying Ronald Reagan's for gay marriage, is that what I'm hearing? I don't think he would stand in the way of it, you know, at, at all. I don't think he would stand in the way of, of two people wanting um, to make a commitment to one another. I mean he believed and he, you know, he told me when I was very young um, that you know, some people 
loves uh, some men love other men some women love other women because it was like I said it was around it was in our house it was on television um, I can you know I've actually I've told this story before but it's probably a good time to tell it again the first time that he ever explained what gay men although he didn't use that word um, was when I was watching some TV movie or some you know Hollywood movie uh, with him where Rock Hudson was kissing someone, probably Doris Day, I would think. And and I said to my father, and I was fairly young, and I said to my father, that looks weird. And he said, what do you mean that looks weird? And I said, it just looks weird, him kissing her. I didn't know what I meant. I just knew it looked strange to me. And he said, he said, well, that's because he doesn't want to be kissing her. He would rather be kissing a man. <laughs> And I said, really? And he said, yeah. He said, that was my first explanation, you know. He said, you know, some men love other men, some women love other women. That's just the way they are. And he said it with no judgment, you know, no accusation, no um, dismissiveness. Of, uh, it was just, that's just the way it is. I really want to thank you for your time today. We're here with the wonderful Patty Davis. Go on Amazon and find Till Human Voices Wake Us, a very beautiful and moving novel. And thanks again, Patty. Thanks, Howard.